Hi, my name is Jone. I'm Luke. I'm Gabby. And our video is about compliments. <laughs> so, what is a compliment? A compliment is an expression of adoring praises or admiring towards somebody. It can happen between people who have different social statuses, gender, and age. Because of differences, the act of giving compliments towards somebody may vary. Um, compliments are divided into three categories compliments in appearances, compliments in skills and abilities, and compliments in possession. The purpose of a compliment and why we use them. So, compliments serve various purposes in communication. People often use compliments for a variety of reasons to express appreciation, to establish a social bound, and strengthen relationships with, another, with one another. Can be considered a positive, polite strategy, but can have other functions as well. Um, and why we use compliments? So compliments bring positive energy into communication between people. Um, different cultures use and respond to compliments in different ways. For example, in the US, compliments are seen as a positive input to any um, conversation. In New Zealand, it is the same as the US when it comes to compliments. And Europeans use compliments similar, similarly. But instead of saying, I really like your outfit, they will say something like, your outfit is beautiful. They have the same meaning, but a different way of putting them. Americans tend to compliment more on appearance, while Europeans tend to compliment more on skills and abilities. Um, compliments on appearance. So a compliment about someone's appearance, the compliments are usually about the appearance for the person, such as the clothes or their hair. Compliments to someone's appearance is the most common type of compliment. So, which is, for example, your hair is beautiful or you're very pretty. Video. Um, to his view, 
may use compliments less frequently since compliments can be seen in soft sense of being face threatening acts. And then we have a chart. So this is how, this is the number between men to women and women to men, or men to men or female to female, and this is based off of um, a study that was done in a college campus and it was 180 compliments altogether. So men to men is 29%, female to men is 20, no, 29 people, female to men is 27, Fe um, men to female is 20, Nine, and then female to female is 95. So females complement more than men. And then this is on the this is on the three different um, complement categories. So we have appearance, skills, and possessions. So men to men is about 6.9 percent, which is two complements. Um, skills and abilities is 82.8 percent, which is 24 complements, and then possession was. 1%, and then men to female on appearance is 25.9% equals 7 complements. Skills or abilities is 59.3%, which is 16%, and then 0 for possession. Female to men is 24.1%, which is 7 complements. Skills and abilities is 16 complements, which is 59.3%, and then possessions is 10.3%, which is 3 complements. Then on appearance for females to females is 64 complements, is 64 point, 67.4% on skills and abilities is 21.4%, which is 20 complements, and then possessions is 3.2%, which is 3 complements. And then I'm going to turn it over to Luke to do backhanded compliments. I did my part on that kind of compliments. Uh, that kind of compliments are compliments that imply not really a compliment at all. Uh, uh, for example, they are, uh, you, you're surprisingly good at this. Uh, I did not expect you to do so well on this test. Good job. Or you're pretty brave, you're pretty brave for a girl. Uh, that kind of compliments have two uh, simultaneous goals. Uh, one is to show a liking to what is being done, like saying that's a good job. And the other is to show power that is, for example, for you, or for a woman, or for a race or gender. Uh, the back end of complements certain expectations. We expect certain races, certain genders, to do things at a certain level. And when they go beyond that, uh, we're surprised and we feel as if we should mention that. Um, I did an example, uh, like a husband and a wife and a daughter. And every morning, the wife would do the daughter's hair. And the husband would well, always watch. Uh, uh, this particular morning, the mom was busy, so the father decided to do the hair in his place, and he tried his hardest to put it in the nicest ponytail he could, and when he finally showed his wife, uh, her response was, that's pretty good for a man. And what do you think of the compliments? How they affect people. Uh, back in the compliments are ineffective as compliments because recipients focus just on the compliment and more on the comparison to the negative standard. But this focus reduces both perceptions about their ability and their motivation. Uh, back then, the compliments do not work because a person who sees the compliments will only think about how their effects were good, were just good enough for themselves, and so far in comparison to others. The weird compliment, like it was, it was a sort of compliment. This girl comes up to me after show and she says, "Hey, I thought you were really funny, <laughs> and I also think you're kind of hot <laughs> for a black guy." <laughs> That's not really a compliment, actually. <laughs> Yeah, you just attacked my entire dang race. <laughs> to me, that's not cool. And she used the woman defense. The woman defense. She said, you know what that means. <laughs> you know. <laughs> when she was hot, I was like, I know what you meant. I know, I know. It's okay. Can I follow your 
candies? <laughs> Not that one, the other one. <laughs> Why would you offer me the brown candies? okay to make mistakes because you learn. It's okay for someone to point out your mistake because then you get better. What's not okay is to beat yourself up. So criticism really comes from three different formats. There's the very destructive negative criticism and then there's constructive criticism and then there's the worst one of all which is you being a critic to yourself. And just as there are three ways of criticism coming at you, there are three ways of dealing with it. Let's start with self-criticism. That is the worst one, the voice in your head that says, you can't do that, you'll mess it up, you'll never get it right, you're just not good at that. I want you to change that voice to a cheerleader, a parent who dotes on you, a teacher who thinks you are the best thing in the world. And I want you to hear that voice saying, yay, you can do it. You're amazing. This is your area of excellence. You're good at this. You know, if you're a kid running a race at school, you want your parent to be going, come on, come on, you're brilliant, you're amazing. If you were doing an assignment at school, you want the teacher or your parent to go, you're, you're very smart. You're really good at writing. This is your skill set. So I want you to become a loving parent to yourself, a praising teacher, a cheerleader that always goes, yes. You can do this, this is easy for you, this is a walk in the park. Or you have the skills, the talent, you've, you've read that book, you know the answers, you've studied. So that's how you stop being your own worst critic. Flip it over, and if you're saying, I always mess it up, start to go, I get it right, I always forget things, I've got a great memory. That's the most important one. The second one is when you're dealing with a critic who says, oh, I don't know why you ever volunteered to speak. You're so wooden. It's an insult to wood. And now you have to choose to not let that in. Critical people, I promise you, have the most criticism to preserve for themselves. Critical people reflect out to you that they're very unhappy with them. And you have to choose to not let it into when someone says, oh, that speech you gave was awful. You just go, well, thanks for sharing. It was my first time. I was learning. I actually really enjoyed it. And they're going to get better and better. So don't get defensive and go, how dare you say that? Or you've heard me. Just go, thanks for sharing that. There was room for improvement. And I'm getting better. And if they say really mean things, remember they're having a bad day. Don't let it in. Now let's go to constructive criticism when your boss says, look, you're really, really good on your own, but you just don't seem to have people skills or, you know, you're really good at sales, but actually you're terrible at presenting. Look for the compliment in there and decide that you will learn. You know, when people give you constructive criticism, when I teach, I say, well, tell me how I can improve. When people read my books, go, what did you like the most? What did you like the least? I want constructive criticism, it helps me grow. All um, businesses want feedback, including negative feedback, because that's how you grow. So if your boss or your partner calls you up and says, I was really disappointed in that, or you're not good at that, or I don't like it when you do that, don't get defensive, learn and grow. Napoleon said, a man who never made a mistake, never made anything, it's okay to make mistakes because you learn. It's okay for someone to point out your mistake because then you get better. What's not okay is to beat yourself up and give yourself a really hard time for making a mistake. If you make a mistake and you learn and you decide I'll never do that again, you've now massively enhanced your education and the quality of who you are. It's okay to make mistakes. It's not okay to keep making the same mistake it's not okay to give yourself a hard time. So remember, don't 
Don't criticize yourself. Don't let in destructive criticism from other people and learn and grow and let in constructive criticism because it's there to help you get even better. Thanks for listening.